In this video, I'm dealing with Vicki Adams' claim that she saw Shelley and Lovelady on the first floor when she came down after the shooting. And I think this is an accurate uh, account. I think she did see them there. But there are some timing issues, and that's what I'm going to explore in this video. And I will be using this document here to establish timing uh, information. This is an FBI document where they went through several scenarios of what a person walking uh, from the sixth floor could have done involving the stairway, the elevators, which floors they went to, and all that. There is another page to this document, but I'm not using that page. So I've just put these two up here. I'm not going to read it all, but you may stop the video and do so if you like. Using these two scenarios, it can be established that it takes 39 seconds for the elevator to go from the first floor to the sixth floor. And I'm going to use that as the time it takes the elevator to go either up or down from the first floor to the sixth floor or from the sixth floor to the first floor. And with that information and comparing these two scenarios, you can determine that the FBI uh, experiment took uh, 30 seconds to walk down the stairway from the sixth floor uh, to the first floor. So I'll be using this as the basic timing for going down the stairs. And using the elevator timing and this scenario here, you can determine that the FBI run trial uh, took 75 seconds to traverse both the sixth and first floors. That is the two of them. And if you do a simple division, you would say you could say that it takes 37 and a half seconds to traverse each floor. Now the fact is, however, they say the travel was done at a fast walk, except in areas where an individual would have walked at a normal pace so as not to arouse suspicion. This means, essentially, that the FBI says they walked more quickly on the sixth floor than they did on the first floor. So what I'm going to do is assume or that they... I'm going to assume a time, I'm going to assign a time of 30 seconds for the FBI to have walked across the sixth floor and 45 seconds for the first floor. That's a little arbitrary, but I think it's reasonable. So using the FBI times as a basis, I'm saying that it takes Lovelady, who I say was on the sixth floor, but if you want it to be someone else, you can have it be someone else. I'm going to say it takes Lovelady 30 seconds to go from the window to the, to the uh, well, I drew it to the stairway here. I'm saying he took the elevator, the east elevator. But anyway, I'm going to say it takes uh, 30 seconds for Lovelady to traverse the sixth floor. And as I have already explained, I have a time of 39 seconds to take the elevator down from the sixth floor to the first floor. So what I'm saying here is that Billy Lovelady is on the uh, first floor in uh, uh, 69 seconds, one minute, nine seconds. And here I have noted on the first floor, floor diagram that Lovelady was there at 109 one minute, nine seconds after the shots. Now, I don't mean to say this is a precise time for Lovelady. In fact, I think he could have done it faster than that if he had run across the sixth floor rather than walked quickly, as the FBI said they did. But I'm just using the FBI times here. And now on to Vicki Adams. I'm not going to read this here, but she says that after she left the window on the fourth floor and went back to the stairway, she noticed that the elevators were not moving. She says here she doesn't uh, remember whether she noticed afterwards whether or not they were moving. But when she got to the stairway, they were not moving. So this has to be considered when considering the timing issues. <clears throat> and Mr. Bellin asked her, how long do you think it was between the time that the shots were fired and the time that you left the window to start toward the stairway? And she says between 15 and 30 seconds, estimated approximately. And uh, so, 
we have this time. She stood at the window, apparently, probably talking. Sandra Stiles was with her through all this, by the way. But I'm just going to talk about Adams, because nobody talked to Sandra Stiles. Uh, apparently, she stayed at the window for approximately 15 to 30 seconds. Now, to judge by the floor diagrams available, there are two ways that she could have gone. The green way looks more direct, of course, and you would expect that, but I don't know anything about this door here, whether it's a door that was commonly used, whether Vicki Adams commonly used it, whether she would have thought of that door or not. The office she's in is an office with furniture in it, an office that's being used as an office. And so it's not clear to me whether she went that door, the more direct route, or whether she went out the front door, the door she probably used every day. And uh, if she had gone the front doorway, of course, that's a longer trip. And if she had gone the more direct route, there's still furniture in the office to walk around. And I've never seen a photograph of the area back there. It calls it open storage space, but I don't know if you can walk in a direct line there or not. So there's a lot of unknowns about exactly uh, what route she took to get to the back stairway. Uh, however, if she gets there at uh, shots plus 109, a minute and nine seconds after the shots, and I think it's reasonable to think that it might have taken her that long because uh, traversing the floor, if it's an open space, is 30 seconds. Uh, so that's only another 39 seconds, and she's at the window for, for perhaps 30 seconds. So we're talking about a nine-second difference here. So although I can't prove it, I think it's reasonable. It's, it is uh, a reasonable possibility that she didn't get to the stairs until a minute nine after the shots. And if she didn't get to the stairs until then, then she would not have seen the elevators moving because Billy Lovelady was already on the first floor. Now her time to descend the stairs can be figured based upon the FBI timing. The FBI said it took 30 seconds, or based on what I showed you before, that it took 30 seconds to go from the sixth floor to the first floor. That is to travel five floors, 30 seconds. Well, that would make it six seconds per floor, which does sound kind of quick. But based on the FBI timing, that would mean that it would take uh, Adams 18 seconds to go down three floors. That is to go from the fourth floor to the first floor. And so Adams gets to the first floor at 1 minute 27 seconds after the shots and sees Shelley and Lovelady there. Now at this time, uh, the pro she doesn't say, but I think the elevator that, she that Lovelady came down on was taken up again immediately by Jack Doherty. And uh, she probably would not have noticed that on the stairway after she had started down the stairs. So, uh, and she doesn't claim to have noticed that after she started down the stairs. So I think that explains how Adams gets there in time to see Shelley and Lovelady. And it explains how the elevator is no longer there and is on the fifth floor when Truly and Baker come by. As for the Baker timing, that is uh, generally what is considered the official time that it took uh, Baker to get to the second floor is what the Warren Commission determined through their trials, and they have that at 90 seconds. But Baker says here, we simulated the shots, and by the time we got there, we did everything that I did that day, and this would be the minimum, because I am sure that I, you know, it took me a little longer. So even though the Warren Commission has two times, one is a minute and a half, and another is a little less than that, Baker is sure that it took longer, and I think this means that the Warren Commission was trying to make it as short as possible. That might seem counterintuitive to a lot of people, because most people are thinking about Oswald having enough time to get to the second floor lunchroom. I don't think they were worried about that. I think they were worried about Shelley and Lovelady being seen on the first floor by Vicki Adams, and I think they wanted to make this time as fast as possible, because it's as, the faster it is, 
the harder it is to make the numbers work. And so I think the fact that Baker said it took longer means it took longer. And I'm going to give it another 20 seconds. Now, I, actually, I'm giving it slightly more than that because the way the Warren Commission talks about the timing is from the first shot, Baker's timing, not from the last shot. But I think uh, if you want to do it from the first shot, it might be two minutes. But just to make the, the comparisons consistent, I'm going to call it a minute and 50 seconds after the last shot was fired, Baker was on the second floor looking at Oswald. So Baker is on the second floor at a minute 50 after the last shot, and it takes six seconds to go up one floor. Then at a minute 44, he would be on the first floor, and I've got 134 for his time here because I'm allowing 10 seconds for uh, Truly to holler up the elevator shaft two times, as Baker said he did. And I think it, probably that was less than 10 seconds, so I think I'm being a little... A little generous there. So if we look at the times here, it all works out. Love Lady gets to the first floor at 109, and Doherty gets into the elevator and takes it up right after that. And then uh, it's 18 seconds later, Vicki Adams shows up. She sees Shelley and Love Lady, and then she runs out the back door where the four is up there to the loading dock. And then seven seconds. After uh, she was there, Baker and Truly show up and start hollering up the elevator shafts. So I'm not trying to pretend that this is the precise time. What I'm saying is that it is plausible that the timing works out. And because Vicki Adams, I think, is a reliable and honest witness, and Shelley and Lovelady are two lying tools of the conspiracy, I think this is what happened. And Baker happens to remember seeing two white men uh, near the elevators when he went in, whom I think, of course, are Shelley and Lovelady. Senator Cooper asked, did you see anyone else while you were in the building other than this man you have identified later as Oswald and Mr. Truly? On the first floor, there were two men. As we came through the main doorway to the elevators, I remember as we tried to get on the elevators, I remember two men. One was sitting on this side and one uh, between 20 or 30 feet away from us looking at us. Were they white men? Yes, sir. So this is consistent with Shelley and Lovelady uh, being there uh, just after Vicki Adams had left and still there when uh, Baker and Truly show up. And of course, Baker, Truly, I mean, I should say uh, uh, Shelley, Lovelady, and Truly don't say that Shelley and Lovelady were there. Uh, I don't think Truly was asked, actually. And there are other issues to deal with, of course. Most notably, uh, Eddie Piper denied that Victoria Adams came down the stairway uh, before Truly and Baker went up. In fact, he never saw her come down. Uh, I think, as I explain in this video, that that was a coerced statement from Eddie Piper. I think they wanted, they felt a need to kill this idea that, that Billy Lovelady and Shelley were in the Texas School Book Depository at this time, and I think he was persuaded to kill the idea. And we know that Mr. Bellin knew about Sandra Stiles, and we know that Mr. Bellin did not talk to Sandra Stiles. The Warren Commission didn't want to talk to her they wanted to get Eddie Piper to deny that Victoria Adams had come down the stairway, but they could have asked Sandra Stiles, and I think the only reason they didn't is because they knew that she would corroborate what Victoria Adams said. It's almost as if Sandra Stiles doesn't exist, uh, at least uh, in 1964. And I think the reason is because they know the story is true, they know that Victoria Adams saw Lovelady and Shelley, and Sandra Stiles probably saw them too. And of course the prayer man cult says that Baker didn't even go into the building. Um, so, well, I think the less said about them, the better.